Welcome to Everyday Linux User. You may or may not know that Windows 10 is coming to the end of its life and will become unsupported from the 14th of October 2025. You will still be able to get security updates but you will need to pay for them. In this video I am going to lay out some of the options available to you as a Windows 10 user and the decision you make depends on your computer and what you use it for. If your computer is fairly modern, it may well meet the requirements for upgrading to Windows 11. And if you are a gamer or you regularly use Adobe products, then upgrading to Windows 11 might be the most straightforward option. But what can you do if your machine doesn't meet the requirements of Windows 11? Well, let's look at the Windows 11 requirements first. You need a computer with at least 4GB of RAM, but realistically you probably need double that. You need a 64-bit processor running at least 1 GHz, but again you probably need a better processor than that. You need 64GB of storage, uh, again you'll probably need a lot more than that. And you need a graphics card with DirectX 11 or later with a WDDM driver. It must be secure boot capable with the UEFI firmware. And finally, the one component which may make older systems unsuitable, even if it has a decent specification, and that is, it must have a TPM2 module. If your machine has all the requirements except for TPM and you are heavily into gaming or using Adobe products, then you can do one of the following things. So, one, you can stick with Windows 10 and do nothing. At first this would be okay, but as time goes by your machine may miss key security updates. And eventually software companies and hardware vendors will stop supporting it. You can stick with Windows 10 and buy security updates to keep your system up to date. This is okay, but obviously comes at a cost, and eventually software and hardware companies will stop supporting it. The third option is you can upgrade to Windows 11, and it is possible to bypass the TPM checks. But for how long this is true, we just don't know. And the fourth option is you can buy a new computer that is capable of running Windows 11. Now if you are a casual gamer then you can look at something like Ubuntu which has a very good integration with Steam and Proton. Whilst this is a decent option you may need to learn how to install and use Ubuntu and so there is a small learning curve but it is highly likely that you would eventually be very satisfied with it. Not all games work with Proton and if you play online then some features may not be available. Roblox, for instance, isn't available for Linux and has no immediate plans to include it. An alternative option would be to use an online game streaming service like Nvidia's GeForce Now. If you use Adobe products and you don't want to upgrade to Windows 11, or indeed you can't, then you could look to use online tools. And there are many great image editing programs online such as Photopea. Or if you choose to use Linux, you can install GIMP. Using GIMP would include a somewhat steep learning curve. Video editing can be achieved within Linux using Kden Live or OpenShot, and for the casual video editor, they are very good. Again, there are also online tools available. I have deliberately targeted gamers and Adobe users first, as they are the trickiest to deal with, as their requirements are kind of set in stone. They need to be able to continue to do what they're doing now. Now for everyone else though. If you are a casual computer user, and all you use your computer for is web browsing, creating documents, listening to music, and watching videos and things like that, then you have lots of options available to you. One, you could stick with Windows 10, and this is not really a good long term plan for the reasons mentioned previously. You can upgrade to Windows 11, if that is possible. You can install Google's Chrome OS Flex, which I recently reviewed and this is great for a lot of people as it doesn't use much resources. It's easy to set up and use and you can use all of Google's tools such as Google Docs to do all the non-casual stuff like writing letters and creating spreadsheets and presentations. And the fourth option is you can install one of the hundreds of Linux distributions available. Installing Linux may seem daunting and the choice unbearably difficult but really for new users there are only a few to consider. For instance, Linux Mint, Pop! OS, Zorin, or Ubuntu. If you have a really old machine, then you may need to consider something else, and I will link to a video highlighting the available options. The benefit of using Linux over Chrome OS Flex is that all your files will be saved to your computer, and you aren't reliant on Google in any way. Most distros come with all the tools you need, such as Office Suites, 
audio and video players, web browsers, email clients, and you can install loads of other software packages using one of the built-in software managers. If you do any gaming whatsoever, then Linux will be better than Chrome OS Flex because it is easy to install and set up Steam. As of January 2025, 60% of all desktop users are still using Windows 10. That is a lot of computers that could end up in landfill needlessly. Hopefully this video has given you a sense of direction and if you do choose Linux then check out one of the installation guides on this site. I personally would start with Linux Mint. But for now that is it and thank you for watching and I will see you next time on Everyday Linux User.